My name is Susie Venturesfield and I am the Chief Executive of the Welsh Centre for International Affairs. So I became the Chief Executive, um, I mean officially in a few days, but I found out last week, so it's a new role. Um, but I've been at the WCIA for about five years. Um, I joined actually as a volunteer. Um, I was working in North Wales and I um, started to volunteer remotely for the Wales International Development Hub, which was based at the Templar Peace and then got a role as Assistant Chief Executive, then Deputy Chief Executive, and have been here ever since, really. I was already absolutely certain that I wanted to work on international issues and international affairs. I'd um, spent, after university, I trained as a journalist, decided that I didn't necessarily want to be a journalist because um, I wasn't very good at observing, I wanted to get stuck in. Um, so I went and did some overseas education work, uh, first commercially in South Korea and then I did some work in Eritrea with Voluntary Service Overseas and I came back from there fairly determined that I would have my career in, in international issues, international affairs or international development and um, couldn't find something that exactly fit the bill when I came back to the UK. Um, I only came back to the UK initially because I met my now husband in Eritrea and needed to go through the visa process and getting him safely out of the country. So um, I found myself uh, looking for jobs that I was interested in and the one that was most interesting was in North Wales with Chwarateg. Um So working in gender equality in Wales but still on a really important global topic. Um, and while I was there I had a fantastic time working on equalities but was very much keeping my eye open for international opportunities. Um, and I did my master's degree in development management while I was there as well at the Open University. And then initially a job role came up with the Wales International Development Hub and I thought, fantastic, this would be the perfect job for me. And I went for it. I didn't quite get it, but I volunteered for them straight after. So I, I got in touch and said, listen, I think the organisation's fantastic. It was the first I'd heard of them. Um, I really want to be involved. Can I volunteer? And it was through that that I got the opportunity. But um, I just think it's so important for us now. We, we can't pretend that we're in local areas and nothing else affects us. Everything that happens around the world has an impact on us here. Um, and also what we do here has a massive impact around the world. And it's really important that people are aware of that and can make their decisions accordingly. So really thinking about, you know, yes, I'm going shopping, but where do things come from? What am I buying? What's the impact of that? Um, thinking about refugees um, coming into the country, how can I make them feel welcome, why have they come here, what's, what's the challenges they're fleeing from, how might we have, as a country have contributed to some of those problems through our trade policies, through our um, historical policies, our military policies and I think that that's so important that people are aware of that and not everyone will share the same viewpoint on how to respond to that, they should at least have the information, the skills to understand the complexity of that and then an opportunity to understand how they can make a difference and that's really what we do here and I, that's what I'm really passionate about is that everyone can find their way through that information, can understand that it's not just hopeless, they haven't just got to sit back and let it happen, they can do something themselves and we give them the tools for that and then they can make a difference whether it's in their community, in an organisation or whether it's going overseas to do something, all of those are equally valuable I think. Well, moving forward, we're looking at doing that in three main ways, and they're, they're continuing traditions of what we've always done. So I think for me, the bedrock of what we do is global learning. So working with people, particularly with young people, but people of all ages, first of all, to get them interested in global issues. When we've talked about it in the office, we all talk about kind of seminal moments we've had. Something has happened to grab our interest. It might have been a news report, it might have been a trip overseas, it might have been someone coming to talk in the school, but something has happened to grab our interest. So we need to make sure people have the opportunity to have those moments where they get their interest grabbed. So what was it for you? For me, no, I, I've got a few, I've actually got a few ideas, but I mean, I think I, w I always had a bit of an interest, but the real life-changing moment for me was I decided age 18 that I was going to do a, a sort of an equivalent of a gap year. It was only four months. And I was from the Forest of Dean. It's quite a rural community. I have no idea where I, where I got the idea that they even existed, if I'm honest, because no one else did it. My family were, you know, hadn't travelled overseas, but not very far afield to Europe and things.
but I no, I was going to have a gap year. I was going to go to Africa somewhere, and that's what I was going to do. And sort of aged 18, I searched around and found one of these. Probably in hindsight, I'm not sure the full value of the, the gap year programmes, but for me, I went over to Kenya for four months. I was teaching children. I shouldn't have been a teacher at that age, as I look back now. But actually, for me, it was so transformational because I just loved being somewhere else I learned so much I mean I learned far more than I gave I would say in that circumstance as an 18 year old teacher trying to help but actually it was so valuable and just met some really interesting people and just thought yeah this is there's so much out here that I don't know about it's so different to the perceptions that you get from just watching the news um, and, and also, I mean, as I've travelled over the years, you know, people everywhere, of course there are differences, but actually what really fundamentally motivates us is the same. And so you've always got things in common with people and the things that are different are interesting rather than points to disagree about. And I, I, I love that about travelling and I love that about living in other places. Um, and how do you sort of instill that passion that you've obviously got in, in other people? In other people. So I think it's about finding ways to create that moment and realistically it would be great if everyone could have a similar experience and go overseas but actually that's not possible but you can still get really transformational experiences I mean one of our projects now change makers projects we work on with Oxfam Cymru where they get a speaker a sanctuary seeker speaking in school and that's really just having someone with a different experience or a different perspective going and speaking can make a big difference but one of the things I think that's really important is we then do give people an opportunity to do something with that information. I think you can make people aware of a topic like asylum and then they're just like, that's terrible. I feel terrible. What can I do about it? We need to then work with, work with people and say, well, okay, these are the kinds of things you could do to make a difference. These are the options. These are the things other people have done to make a difference and support them to work together to do that. And so with young people, that's very much about giving them sort of the choices, the ideas, and, and giving them the space to do that. And that really follows through into what we then do in terms of global action in Wales, sort of locally but on global, global issues. Um, there's already so many amazing groups across Wales, I think over 100 community links, we've got international development groups, we've got peace groups, um, sanctuary groups across Wales doing fantastic work already but sometimes not having all of the capacity they need or not always being able to have the resource to connect together or to recruit new younger volunteers coming in and that's a gap that a lot of people speak about you know there's they need more people coming in and that's where I think we can fit in in supporting those those people already doing fantastic stuff connecting them with people making sure they can work together to achieve more really and also celebrating what they do outside of Wales you know it's fantastic that Wales is the first fair trade nation um, we hope very much Wales will be the first nation of sanctuary and what a fantastic answer that is to the sort of hostile environment that, that's representing the UK as a whole and I think where we can celebrate those achievements um, that is a fantastic thing as well. And also in encouraging positive global partnerships so through the work uh, as a partner on Hub Cymru Africa where we're supporting Wales Africa partnerships but actually we'd like to go beyond that and support Wales World partnerships. Um, international exchange opportunities so working closely with organizations like UNA exchange to support that kind of work and and to make the connection between young people coming out of school who are passionate who have had a, an education which very soon will have ethical informed citizens of the world at its core as part of the new curriculum making sure that as those people graduate they have somewhere to go that they know there's an organization in their community in their area that they can still be involved and carry that passion forward through their lives and have it influence their decision making and their workplaces and I think that's another part of what we need to do as an organization is to make sure that you know public sector private sector third sector organizations and institutions have a culture that allows that global action global awareness and encourages it and is supportive of, of those kind of positive policies and practices that they can put in place as well so there's a lot to do <laughs> amazing <laughs> <laughs> and do you think the fact that all this great work like the Temple of Peace is a hub for that. Do you think this building and what this building was set up to do, do you think that influences that and are you aware of that in your day-to-day -day work? Yeah, I mean, I think the Wales for Peace project in particular has deepened that perspective. It was very clear from when I came here that this is a very special place and that the building itself 
was there for a reason and that's important it gives you a sense of purpose but i think what the wales for peace project has done is not only to uncover more of the history of the temple itself and there's such an inspiring set of stories there but also similar stories from across wales and for me if you're a young person in wales and you're in a rural area a bit like i grew up in the forest of dean just outside of wales but rural area um and maybe a lot of people around you aren't always interested in some of the things that you're talking about or that you're interested in and, and when you start to talk about global issues people don't connect actually going and seeing some of the stories of people from your area who have done amazing things on international issues and i mean for the from the project you can really find examples from across wales serves as such a source of inspiration and when i talk about seminal moments and getting people inspired i think those stories have such power to inspire people like the green and common stories um the sanctuary stories right back to the belgian refugees i mean that really gives people something to look back on and say this isn't new this isn't something that's new to now um we're not suddenly having these problems it's been going back years and all through that time people have been campaigning and fighting to to make it make the world a better place and i think for me the history gives us that inspiration um the temple's history and what it was built to represent and also how it's changed over the years i mean you know it's it's had different groups in here different charities um different people in in, in charge making different decisions but actually the fundamental purpose has been the same is to engage people in international issues and to recognize that wales needs a voice in those issues and people from wales can have a voice in those issues um and i think it just serves as a real bedrock and inspiration so that we can say listen we we've had this fantastic in wales for peace case 100 years of internationalism let's see what we can do for the next 100 years to make even more of an impact so the temple of peace i believe from having talked to emma it's the only temple of peace in the whole world i know that other ones were planned but what what does that mean to you and how do you describe the temple of peace to other people i think what it means it, it's much like the, some of the other examples I've talked about. Wales is a, is a small nation, but it has the potential to have a real impact about some of the exciting things it's done. First nation to have a temple of peace. I mean, that's an exciting thing. First nation to be a fair trade nation. First nation to be a nation of sanctuary. Um, the support for Wales Africa Community Links. There's a lot of activity in Wales, which the temple is a part of that history that I think we should absolutely be shouting out about around the world. Um, in terms of what it means, I think, in terms of how I describe it to people, um, I don't describe it as a centre for peace, actually, because I think, although our name is Welsh Centre for International Affairs, I think it is important that we think about Wales as a whole. But actually having this building as a place that we're based, with the history that sits behind it, gives us a sense of, you know, the journey that we've been on. You know, we've come from, from after the First World War, a period of hope, building of the Temple of Peace, and then, and then straight into the Second World War, where really that hope was, you know, had, it collapsed. And then, and then from then building again. And I think that, that um, the, the building gives us a symbol of that. And it, although it's in Cardiff, and we're in Cardiff, actually that symbol has relevance around Wales, because although the building's here, the activity and um, work towards internationalism was across Wales. And, it, and and I think, for me, it's about making sure that, yeah, we, we're here and we, we have the building, we protect this, um, and we build on it, but we also make sure that people feel that they can connect to it from the different parts of Wales and that they feel that our work is relevant to them wherever they are as well. Do you have a favourite place or part of the building? Where do you go when you need to... I have two favourite parts of the building. One is, is the council chamber, um, which is the old library, which I just, I mean, I love books anyway, but I love to be in that room. It just gives, it, for me, it's the room that feels like it gives the most sense of the history, but also being surrounded by books is always a fantastic place for me to be. So I love it in there, and I love having meetings in there, because I think when people come into the council chamber, they have a real sense that, oh, this is, this is an important place. This is somewhere that important decisions have been made and I'm now part of that. Um, my other favourite place, I think, is, is the crypt 
because of the atmosphere in the room and that's a place where you get a sense of the kind of remembering loss to build peace part of the building particularly when the book is in its place in that room um, the sound in there is it's quite difficult to describe but it, it it's got a certain quality and being down there on your own I think has quite an impact and does really encourage you to remember the the loss that led to the kind of desire to build something from that loss and I think that's something that's really important um, for us to, for us to remember and actually the Wales for Peace project has done a fantastic job of exploring that kind of remembering loss but also then what you can do for that what you can do from that and what you can build from that and so the crypt reminds me of that um, but I wouldn't sit there and do, do any work because it's, it's definitely too echoey <laughs> and um, looking at sort of wow moments either with events or visitors people who've been here and spoken do you have examples of my first example was as a volunteer, so probably mentioned by others, but um, when I was volunteering in North Wales, when Desmond Tutu visited, I was invited as a volunteer to Mid Wales to meet him on his tour, and that was a pretty special moment. And that was, it was really exciting to be invited to do that as a volunteer. Um, I think other wow moments for me, they've been big and small things. So the first, one of the first things I was tasked with doing was, was creating an event to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Temple of Peace. And we ran a Peace 75 event and competition. Um, and it was the first event in the temple, I think, in a long time that had been more of a festival. So we'd had a lot of lectures and debates. And so that, for me, was a really exciting moment, a really exciting day where we brought people from um, across sort of Cardiff to come together and um, celebrate the Temple of Peace. But lots of children came along and it was really buzzy. And so that was a, that was a really nice thing to be engaging such young, young people on, on that day. Um, other wow moments have been smaller ones, um, but where, when I came, we had kind of occasional volunteers, and one of the things I did was to introduce a volunteer programme, and I mean, we've had 500 plus volunteers since then, um, but really exciting moments for me are when volunteers finish their placements and then go and you know, go away and then a few months later they'll write to me and they say well you know I've got a job in the third sector or I've got a job in international issues or I've um, got a job in the Welsh government or I've got and, and it's because of my time volunteering with the WCIA that I've got that or I've joined a campaign or I've jo you know so where they've they've come from here and they've gone off to do something else and they're coming back and telling us it's because of what they did here and that for me is always a really good moment um, and I think a couple of others that stand out for me. One was um, a very spontaneous event, which was when um, when Joe Cox was murdered. We we had various organisations in the corridor, and then also um, people who were aware of us asked us to come together and hold an event. And that was just people came together quite spontaneously in a way that was, you know, celebrating her life and celebrating the messages of more in common and I felt like that was quite powerful because it was spontaneous and because so many people came together um, and then I think more recently um, I was um, visiting the Tlangothlin Music, the Tlangothlin International Festival and um, Craig gave a, Craig Owens, the head of Wales for Peace, gave a, a speech um, where he kind of summed up the story of Wales for Peace and as well as being a very powerful speech it just brought together in my mind obviously we've been working on that project for several years it's been a lot of work it's been really interesting but it's been a lot of hard work for the team it kind of brought all that together and all of the inspiration from that and I, I felt that you know, that's why we've done this project it's really been worth it it's brought together these amazing projects and these amazing stories and that's going to live on as a legacy for a long time beyond and that's something that's been I think very powerful as well. You're the new director, what do you think you bring? I mean I don't know if you want to talk about the fact that you're the first woman, whether that is significant or... I mean I think, so I think what I, what I bring as the new chief executive is a sense of passion of where we've come from 
and a real excitement about taking us forward for the next five years. And for me, in the year that the Wales for Peace project will, will draw to a close at the end of the year, actually, we've been celebrating this last hundred years of internationalism. And for me, it's about taking that forward for the next hundred years. Um, and I think what, what I will bring is, is the enthusiasm for that. I'll bring new partnerships, strengthen our global learning programme again. We've got a new curriculum coming and it's a perfect opportunity for us to do more work there. Um, and I think it is exciting that the centre's got a female chief executive for the first time. Um, I think that we've had, you know, well, back in this back in the 70s, if you look back then, it was quite a male-dominated organisation. Even moving on into the 80s and 90s, we had... Um, a less diverse board of trustees and it's just a world different to where we are now so first female chief executive but also an incredibly diverse and skilled board of trustees and um, with people from lots of different backgrounds people from different um, professions and it really strengthens us, strengthens us as an organization and I think for, for me moving forward I've got an incredible team that I'm working with and an incredible board of trustees and a lot of what we'll be, I'll be doing is leveraging those skills and um, so that we can achieve even more for the next 10, 15, 20, 100, 200 years into the future. So just to, just to finish, it's the 80th anniversary of the Temple of Peace. Um, what would you like to say to the Temple of Peace? I'd like to say, well done <laughs> for being a fantastic symbol of peace in Wales. And I would like to see the Temple much more open and used um, it's quite exciting for us I think because Cardiff University have bought the building it will as with their other buildings it will become publicly accessible again and that people will come and see the history and be inspired by it and that it continues to be a source of inspiration for generations to come.